Oh yes. New Zealand might just be the ultimate setting for an epic hunting video. You think you've seen natural beauty, but you haven't really until you've been to this place. This is the land of the Lord of the Rings, the land of blue glacier lakes, dense forests, mighty rivers, fjords and waterfalls, and vast open plains flanked by alpine peaks. This is the land where mountaineers come to train for Everest and where Antarctic expeditions begin. It's also a land of isolation, being so far from everything else on Earth that some world maps actually move it tens of thousands of kilometers just so they could fit it on the page. And while this isolation has created a very unique and very wild ecosystem, it's also made it extremely sensitive and created some big ecological dilemmas. You see, New Zealand has a grand total of zero natural predators and zero indigenous mammals. Yes, you heard me correctly, the country where sheep outnumber humans 5 to 1 never had mammals before settlers brought them here. And while this lack of predators is one of the reasons that livestock farming thrives here, there are some other negative implications too. Today, the hills and valleys of New Zealand are home to many mammals that were introduced for meat and fur trade. These include red deer, fallow deer, pigs, elk, and the very sought after Himalayan tar, which people come from all over the world to hunt here. But we're not after trophy game here, we're actually after one of the lesser known invasive species, the wallaby. These small kangaroo-like marsupials cause massive damage to native forests, and although contained to a relatively small area on the island, there's a big push from the government to stop them from spreading. These signs are all over the place, and if you visit the website, it asks you to report wallaby sightings, dead or alive, to help culling teams identify the problem areas. I've come out to the South Island of New Zealand to visit my parents who have recently moved out here, and this gives me the perfect opportunity to not only explore this amazing country, but also to get some rifles out and take out some of these problem animals. In this episode, we'll be meeting up with Jake Greenlaw, a fellow YouTuber from the channel Chase the Wild NZ, and an Element Optics Pro Staff shooter who has helped us to make some epic episodes for the Element Optics Global Hunting Series. Jake will be guiding Nicole and I up into the hills and towards some wallabies, and I can assure you, we'll be showing them no mercy. Let's do it. Our adventure begins with an early morning drive from Christchurch. This was my first time meeting Jake in person and we got acquainted pretty quickly through some conversations on the road and a quick stop for food as we left civilization behind us and moved further out into the hills. The property that we'll be hunting today has no flat spots whatsoever. It's a very typical New Zealand sheep farm with grassy hills surrounded by pine forest and patches of bush. It's in this low bush and tussock that we'll be looking for wallabies, but first we need to do some basic rifle and camera setup just in case we spot some wallabies or pigs on our way in. Right, this is our weapon of choice today. 6mm Creedmoor Tikar Action, Clive Judd laminate stock made in New Zealand, and a Maniatus suppressor. 6mm uh, cartridge is perfect for this animal size. Gen 2 Nexus. 4x25, we'll be taking this probably out to half a K or so on those small targets. Can't wait. I brought a trigger cam with me to capture some scope cam shots and this is a relatively quick and easy setup process on the Nexus Gen 2. With everything ready for action, it's time to head up into the hills. Well, this little uh, hut behind us here is going to be our home for the next day. It's going to be our home base. Uh, we have the very basics here, but obviously out here we don't want luxury. We want to enjoy the, the bare uh, excitement of nature and, and the animals and the sounds and smells around us. 
We've got a gong up on the hill, which we're probably going to take a few shots at just to, uh, you know, get, get used to the rifle. Should be able to head out a bit later and do some damage. Center plate. And one more. Mm. You're clutching at straws, aren't you? Within a click of the thing. Yeah. Pretty much center. That sounded like a center hit. Nice. It very quickly becomes clear to me that this rifle is going to do the job flawlessly for us today. 6mm Creedmoor is an awesome cartridge and it's cut through the swirling wind in this valley like it's nothing. Wanting to wait until evening, we kill some time with snacks and coffee and a couple hours later, we begin to head up the valley. The plan is to walk along the river, stopping every 50 meters or so to scan the bush around us with a thermal. We believe that the wallabies will only be coming out to feed in about an hour's time, but if we can find them while they're still bedded down, we can get an early start. Well, it's just gone around 4 p.m. Um, starting to cool down nicely, the wind's died down a bit. We've got a bit of an orange haze uh, coming over the mountains here. and. Uh, we finally head out, headed out on foot to see if we can find some wallabies. We're hoping that uh, at this time of the evening, they'll start to move out of the bushes where they hide and make themselves uh, visible. I'd probably compare it to like, if you've watched the hare hunting videos on my channel, hares live above the ground, but they actually hide in the thicket um, during the day and they'll just flatten themselves and you won't see them. And they'll slowly come out to start feeding in the evening and that's when they become uh, visible to, to us. So yeah, Jake's just kind of scanning the hillside here with the thermal. Um, hopefully that helps us to, to pick them up. They're very difficult to spot in this terrain. Um, and if we spot anything, we'll get set up with a six mil and see if we can take it down. But yeah, we've got quite a lot of ground to cover. So we're just gonna keep moving up this valley, maybe take a bit of a walk up the mountain and see if we can see anything. We decide to change our strategy a bit and start heading up one of the hill sites. It's quite a steep ascent, but this will give us a nice vantage point from which we can glass larger areas of land. We spot one in a gap, seemingly unaware of our presence, but as I try to move through a ditch to get into a shooting position, he spots our movement and he's gone in a flash. It's amazing how these things just vanish into the tussock. There was a wallaby sitting so nicely in the gap there. But we decided to move a little bit closer. And as we came through the valley, I think he must have noticed the movement. Gone. So, yeah. It's just how hunting goes, but we'll keep at it. First one spotted, I'm sure we'll have some more coming along soon. He's likely making his way that way around. Yeah. We're going to go up and come back that way mm. anyway. But it's good to see that there's a couple out feeding because that's the beginning of the cascade, basically. Yeah. The big the big boys seem to always come out first. They're a bit braver. And okay, no good. You usually always shoot bucks at yeah. first. And then it's not till later on, which is good because the, the, we've got babies in the pouch. Yeah. I always feel bad about shooting. What do you call them? the males and females, bucks and does? Yeah, I guess so. Really? Huh. Yeah. Interesting. We've got, with the 22s from the bottom to the top, we've got 20 and 21, um, with 21 shots in the evening before night. Just, <laughs> just, That's really cool. just start coming out. Yeah. It's like shooting monkeys. Yeah. All of a sudden, I get another opportunity, and this time, yeah. I don't wait around. Hey, that's my first wallaby. Yes. <laughs> nice one, man. Yeah. Good stuff, Thank man. you, man. Yeah, that was cool. Right. So, we saw one up here, got away from us. Saw one down here, got away from us. But uh, the third one, we managed to see him halfway up the hill. 
Jack actually spotted him, was it with a the thermal? Or no, just it? my, just yeah, my eyes. Just with his eye. I think I just got a piece of him, but obviously with a six creed mo with, with uh, match bullets, that did the job really nicely. Oh yeah, well, he's running down. So he, he was, just he was rolled down and yeah, we got he's him. I'm not gonna rub that one off. Very and now's cool. the time to keep your eyes out because they get a bit restless after a shot. Yeah. Once again, local knowledge proves to be spot on. The commotion brings out another wallaby, which I catch out of the corner of my eye, and once I'm sure I can place the shot on a good chunk of his vitals, I squeeze off the trigger. Yep, that's a wallaby. It was a wallaby. Yep, it was a wallaby. <laughs> and yes, I was recording. Oh, wow, these things, I, I actually can't believe how, how well they hide in this terrain. It's like, I mean, if you, if you just looked at this, there'd be very few animals that could disappear in grass and low brush like this, very few. And uh, these things just vanish. They'll, you'll see them for a few seconds, then they'll kind of jump behind a bush, and then they'll miraculously appear behind a different bush. So I just saw one, geez, that was close, probably 70, 80 meters. Yeah. And uh, I saw him move, and then I sat and looked at him with, through the scope, and he was keeping so still and I couldn't tell if it was a wallaby or a rock. It was insane. So eventually I yeah. thought I saw a bit of movement on the head, decided to pull the trigger, and yeah, I put him straight down. It definitely was not a rock. No, <laughs> a full-size male wallaby. Yeah, that one's close. I think we should go look at him. Yeah. Hey, okay, let's do it. Yeah. Jake offers to go fetch our latest casualty, and this gives me an opportunity to see one of these strange animals up close for the first time. I won't turn this around. Yeah. Well guys, uh, this is my second wallaby. This one's a, apparently a relatively small one. It's hard to gauge the size on the other side there, but um, as you can see, it's like a little happy kangaroo. <laughs> small feet in the, in, or arms in the front with kind of sharpish claws, and then big old back legs that they hop around on. So yeah, very nice to get one down. Definitely a new species for me. Um, they balance themselves like kangaroos so they've got this big old tail at the back here and uh, use that to balance when they on their back feet interesting animal definitely one to add to the list of interesting stuff i've shot and yeah as mentioned before these are invasive to new zealand so while they may be sort of like one of the national emblems of australia australia's rugby team is called the wallabies out here they're just a problem <laughs> and there's no natural predators to to hunt them out here. So, I mean, just in this little valley here, we've probably seen 10 or 15 just hopping around. Mm. And uh, they heavily rely on hunters in New Zealand to actually keep the numbers down and kill them. So, yeah, it's not it's not like a exotic animal trophy hunt. It's a pest control mission, and we're more than happy to help out. With the sun not too far from setting, we are likely minutes away from, as Jake calls it, a cascade of wallabies. We're expecting many of them to come out and we want to be in position when that happens. So we move further up the valley towards a particular spot that Jake wants to take me to. On the way, we spot a lone wallaby moving across the valley and I take a quick sitting shot, timing my trigger pull perfectly. Sacked it. <laughs> Beautiful. Unsteady. <laughs> Um, I think I might have, well, I hit record, but I think there might have been a bit too much recall of my knee to get it on camera. Yeah, yeah. What is the distance? 200. 200, 200 yards? Yeah, mate. Off the knee? And he went. Oof. Yeah, I felt good on that one. Like you've been hit by a jacket. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> good. We don't have time to hang around though. We really want to get up to our sniper spot. And when we do get there, oh, is it worth it? We have just hit the mother load. One that's a bit further up. One. <laughs> awesome. That was cool. Three for three. See the one at the back there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the one at the back there. Just I'm recording. 
Same shot placement as last couple. Yeah. Yeah. Sacked it. Dead. The other one's bouncing towards it. Yeah. Might stop on the same one. No, he's gone around the corner. Uh, yeah, he, ooh, up on the hill. Yeah, I can just see his head. Can't see him there? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I don't think I got that one. Okay, just let the... Oh, the other one's rolling down. <laughs> let the hill uh, relax. Oh, I got him. There he goes. He fell. Yeah, yeah, nice. So, did get that one. Nice. Well, Jake was right. Day started off uh, very quiet and slow. We saw nothing basically the whole whole day. And as the sun started to dip, the activity levels just went up. We literally have just got five within a few minutes in the space of probably probably 50 meters or 100 meters of each other. Well, this is the spot right here. Sun yeah. going down over there. Almost wish I had the drone with me just to fly yeah. down. I could have carried it too. I know. <laughs> what? What's the use having a fireman if you don't give him stuff to carry? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Jake, thank you. This is like my pleasure, mate. This is the most fun I've had in in, in years, probably actually. To oh, be honest. Oh man. Well, look, there's another one. Right, same shot placement. Yeah. So first, go back to your first one. Yeah. On the left, just up from your first <clears throat> body. Up in the left. Mm. Trying to see him there. Okay. Yeah. Got him. You might have to go one and a half dial for him. Okay. Just seen this one again, number six. Well, when ready, Matty. Okay. Oh, yes. That six mil is doing the job. This is the perfect, Beautiful. perfect cartridge for this. Um, very aerodynamic bullet, high speed, flat shooting. No recoil. Got enough punch, low recoil. So for scope cam stuff, I'm going to get myself a six mil. Oh, I just cost you some money, didn't I? Yeah, I think you did. Yeah. <laughs> I love that 6 mil. It's one of my favorite guns. We take a breather from the adrenaline rush that we just experienced and spend some time enjoying our surroundings and reviewing some shots. But we always keep one eye out looking for more wallabies and it's not long before our next victim puts himself in the crosshairs. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Seven for seven. Seven for seven. Lucky I loaded a bit of ammo. And this is where with long range hunting, right? You've got the high ground, they're calm, they're still. You can see for them for follow shops, follow up shops if you need them. Hmm. How more ethical can you get? Yeah. Every single one of those has just gone down. And you've got time. Yeah, you've got time. That's the thing with long range hunting, you normally have time. Yeah. You're not running around, right? I mean, I feel more confident blitzing one here than on the run off my knee yeah. <laughs> at close range. Do you want to dial to um, 2.25? Mm -hmm. And Nicole, would you like to shoot one? This one doesn't know that we're here, so it's a great opportunity for Nicole to get on the scoreboard. Right now, on the shoulder. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, he's dead. These are a prototype uh, set of our new Helix HD binoculars. By the time you watch this, I'm sure they'll be uh, available to, to purchase. But um, just to show you, this is the kind of prototype uh, testing that we do. We don't just test in a lab. <laughs> we don't just uh, test on like indoor equipment. We actually go out and we use these out in, in nature like this um, in all kinds of conditions. You know, earlier today it was really sunny, so you can check for, you know, how the lenses handle glare. And now as the light fades, we can see how they perform at low light. And so far, um, they've been awesome. So as far as a sort of affordable set of, of, of uh, binos go, these are pretty awesome and you should definitely check them out. Wow, we're going through the ammo. <laughs> yes. We spot another one and it's Nicole on trigger duty once again, hoping to get her second. Maybe 10 meters, there's a wallaby. If you look through your binoculars, you'll be able to see he's feeding, and then there's another one to the left with his head up. 
It unfortunately hops back into the tussock, but we stay put knowing that more will show up and Nicole makes the next opportunity count. Greg. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes! <laughs> oh, that was a good shot. That was. Thanks so much for the oh, help. Yes. Yo, that was great. Wicked. Yo, it's so nice just to watch him go straight down. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Stone cold killer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 1.6 dialed. Yep, 1.6 dialed. Let's record here. Yeah, I'm on them too. They just keep on tumbling, and despite this, they somehow seem to respawn, and Jake is able to get in on the action too. Oh, yes. Well, I've only been using the Gen 2 Nexus for, well, this is sighted in, and then we've been shooting wallabies at it. And I tell you what, it ticks so many boxes for me. Beautiful turret with the indicator, capped windage, because I use my rifles, carry them through everything, up mountains, through snow, so I like that. And the glass, like we're on last light, and when you look through your scope, even with the trigger cam on it, it looks like clear daylight. Um, the reticle's beautiful to use as well, first focal plane, and it's um, the line subtensions are just perfect. Don't get in the way, and are precise enough. Oh, I think I've got another one here, mate. And you, Nicole? Oh, yeah. Oh. Ran around a little, but he's gone. Oh, that's nasty. Big hole in him. Wicked. Oh, yes. I'm nicking all your fun here, Matt. Well, uh, this exceeded my expectations, especially this section here where we've just been kind of hammering in from this little perch up on the hill here. Um, but we are losing light, which means it's going to become harder to film stuff with the cameras. Uh, it's not an issue for the Nexus. We're seeing stuff very easily with our eyes through the scope, but yeah, we do want to get stuff on camera. So what we're going to do is going to make our way all the way down to the hut. We're going to make some dinner. We're going to charge up some batteries. And then later on, we're going to head back out with the with the thermal uh, and yeah i think we're going to pick up a lot of these uh, wallabies with the thermal um, jake tells me they're crawling all over these hills i mean there must be thousands on just this area you're seeing behind me here thousands i mean we've got probably 10 plus in mm. one little valley here it's insane but that's what we're going to call it for now we'll head down and we'll see you guys later in the next episode, we'll be bringing out the rim fires and heading up the mountains once again for round two. It's going to be another slaughter fest. There's no other way to describe it, so be sure to subscribe and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.